Almost everything in our economy is now framed by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. From energy prices, food prices and global security, it's all changed since Russian troops crossed the border. Today, we spend time looking at the impact from food to weapons. This week, I sat down with Grain Corp's Chief Executive, Robert Spurway. Grain Corp has an office in Kyiv with 15 people and is a major buyer of Ukrainian wheat. It's the Australian company with the best knowledge of Ukraine and, as you'll hear, he's worried about global food shortages. It's a horrific situation for those people and I think first and foremost it's important to remember it's about the people. As hostilities broke out, we'd taken care of the business, so it was very easy to make sure that our primary and only focus was on the safety of people. We facilitated the movement of all of those people out of Kyiv, and they remain out of Kyiv. Some of them were unable to leave Ukraine because of the martial law that was in place, uh, but a number of them have been able to get across borders, and we're facilitating uh, them being in our offices in the UK, for example. So really, looked after our people to make sure that they could be as safe as possible and that was our key focus. OK, so the people, you've got them safe, but what about the crops in Ukraine? Being such a significant wheat producer, uh, you're probably in the best position to be able to ascertain what the war has done to disrupt the, the growing of, of the grains. Ukraine produces about 80 million tonnes a year of grain. It represents about a third of the global market for traded grain. So it's really important in feeding the world. That's clearly been disrupted. Uh, right at the moment, they're coming out of the winter there, so uh, it's a bit unknown uh, what's going to happen with the upcoming crop. But it's fair to say it's going to be disrupted at least for the next year and possibly a number of years with infrastructure in the country damaged, ports closed and aside from just the, the risk of doing business there, it's very clear that that grain production is not likely to be available for the export markets anytime soon. And it's because of the scale of those farming operations that uh, Grain Corp put its office in Kyiv and put those people in Kyiv in the first place was to be able to interact and, and trade with, with Ukraine. It's part of our international strategy to provide resilience and certainty to our global customers so that we weren't wholly reliant on the drought cycles that can occur in Australia. Obviously very good times in Australia at the moment, which protects us and the world somewhat from what's happening from a food point of view. But yes, accessing that grain, uh, making sure that we were part of that trade to customers and countries that need it around the world. But then to further disrupt global supply, there's Russia, which is also a significant grain producer, but now sanctions are going to limit, or in fact eliminate, the amount of grain that will come out of Russia. So that again disrupts the global supply. Yes, it's important to remember that food at, is, at this stage has not been sanctioned but much of the freight and the money flow has been and creates disruption. So Russia's still able to export and it's exporting to some countries around the world, uh, but it's certainly disrupting trade through the Black Sea in general. And that is a challenge for the world and we'll see that impact food inflation and prices. Uh, and in time, we'll see the impact on physical supply to countries that need that food. OK, so then bring it back to Australia, because clearly Grain Corp is the major player in grains in this country. There's been bumper crops around Australia in the last little while, notwithstanding recent floods. Has Australia got an ability to make up part of the shortfall that's going to be seen from Russia and Ukraine? We are working extremely hard to do our bit to export grain to the world that helps feed the world but also helps Australian growers and get the benefit of the dynamics in the market at the moment. Remember as hostilities broke out in Ukraine we were already seeing disruption to supply in the northern hemisphere with drought across the, the US and Canada in particular. So this is another impact on supply in a world that's got a huge demand and consumption of grain at the moment. I think the important thing in Australia is that we're very resilient, uh, we've got huge food security, we produce much more than we need and that creates opportunity for exports which is good for Grain Corp and very good for the Australian economy. But as Chief Executive of Grain Corp you've got to be a little delicate because grain farmers here, Grain Corp itself, are having fantastic times partly as a result of what's taking place in Ukraine and Russia and I know that can happen when drought occurs in other parts of the world and other people are, are suffering but it's one of these situations where Australia right now, Grain Corp right now is benefiting. You could see that from the recent profit upgrade that you made. 
That is part of the overall picture. We've got a situation in the world at the moment where inventories are at record low levels, demand and consumption is high, and supply has been disrupted principally through drought, uh, but then more recently through the hostilities in Ukraine. So that does create opportunities for Australian grain. It puts it in more demand around the world. It's increases, increased commodity prices generally across the world, soft commodity prices. And that creates opportunities for Australian growers. We were needing to export the amount of grain that we've produced over the last year or two anyway. So it just means that Australia's getting good prices for that grain and doing our bit to feed the world. And it would be fair to say that for those Australian growers who had been through horrendous droughts, particularly in South Eastern Australia, you know, some three years ago, four years ago, that this really is a bit of a catch up for them in many ways. So it might help to replenish their stocks or indeed to be able to replenish their bank accounts. It is unusual to be in a situation where you've got good volumes, in fact bumper crops and record volumes and good prices at the same time built off demand around the world. So it is a good opportunity for Australian growers. Having said that, input costs are higher as well. So uh, some of the, the benefit and the opportunity that growers are able to access is offset by the fact that they're paying more for fertiliser, labour's constrained, so there's a lot of challenges and it just highlights the resilience of the farming sector quite frankly. But do you get a sense that in this coming season that we'll see that Australian farmers will grow more, that they'll put in more crops to try and take advantage of the current, the current conditions? Look, at the end of the day, it's about the weather, and the weather, again, is shaping up to be pretty good. The outlook from the Bureau of Meteorology is for a wetter-than-average autumn period. Growers are busy planting at the moment. It's a little bit early to call what the crop is going to look like, but the potential is likely to be there. Farmers will plant a fairly full area. Moisture profiles are full across the east coast of Australia in particular. And just over the Easter weekend, there was rain across southern New South Wales and Victoria, which helped those growers that were getting into seeding. So things look pretty good for the Australian crop, and that's great for farmers. Obviously, we'll all be looking to have some uh, benign and good weather through the growing season uh, because harvest is still many months away. Yeah, it's true. I want to take you to the bigger picture. With a, a rising world population, there is pressure now on the agriculture sector in particular to, to feed the world. Disruptions such as what's taken place in Russia, Ukraine, are clearly important in terms of the stability of the food chain into the future. Are you confident right now that there is enough food being grown around the world for this rising population, and especially when you have situations like Russia and Ukraine, you know, sort of arise? When I started out in my career, I went into the food industry on the basis that people would always need to eat. And over the years, that's been tested because of droughts and disruption and the sorts of challenges of global trade. But ultimately, it holds true. And I think the farming sector generally, and Australia in particular, has been very good at bringing in innovation and technology, different seed varieties in the cropping regions to improve yields and improve production to do our bit to, to help feed the growing population around the world. There's more of that innovation required. We're very fortunate in Australia we produce much more than we can consume and that creates opportunities to take even more valuable product to the rest of the world. But short term people are talking about food shortages, you know, is this a, a reality right now? I think if you look at the disruption in Ukraine it's absolutely a reality, 80 odd million tonnes um, of production that's going to be disrupted, uh, almost uh, all of the exports out of Ukraine are disrupted for the foreseeable future. And to put some numbers, 33% or thereabouts of global traded grain comes out of Ukraine. Australia only contributes about 10 to 15%. Where would so, you like it to be? Oh, look, I think we're probably constrained by the fact that we're in the driest continent on the planet, so we can only produce so much. And to give you some numbers, the last couple of years, the crop size in Australia has been give or take 60 million, I think just over 60 million in the last year, just under the prior year. And we consume only about 15, 15 and a half million of that. So that exportable surplus is significant, but nowhere near enough to make up for the shortfall that we're seeing through drought in the Northern Hemisphere or disruption out of Ukraine. Robert Spurway, many thanks for your time. Great to chat today. My pleasure.